The last topic we're going to cover today is uh, foreign affiliate dumping rules. And uh, I believe Brad mentioned it uh, briefly in, as, as, uh, in part of his uh, topic. Um, it's essentially, it's the, the reverse uh, direction of the investments um, for a, a foreign affiliate. Um, so instead of it being a, an upstream loan, it's effectively a downstream either investment in shares or a loan. Um, so this came out uh, in the... Um, in the March 2012 budget. Um, so really, what, what are the rules um, and why were they introduced? Uh, second, what are the, the tax implications in Canada and um, when do they apply? And the third, of course, is, you know, are there any exceptions to, to avoid this situation? So what are they? Well, as I mentioned, it was originally in introduced in uh, March of 2012 in the budget. And basically what the situation was, they were, they, the finance was, was concerned with what they were calling double dip arrangements where um, they were able to uh, get deductions for one end of the uh, financing and not recognize income on the other end. So really what was happening is if structured the way that some of them were, you could really erode the Canadian tax base of the, the Canadian company involved in the structure. So what this involves is a, basically a, a foreign parent controlling a Canadian corporation which then has a foreign subsidiary, a foreign affiliate below it. Um, a foreign affiliate for tax purposes in a really general way, in a general definition is is one that um, the Canadian company holds at least 10% of the equity of that uh, foreign company. So for a foreign affiliate definition, um, where this applies is when the Canadian owns at least 10% of a foreign corporation and has a foreign parent. So to make it look a bit simpler, now that the uh, dotted lines I'll explain in a second, but this is really the structure that uh, these rules are intended to catch, is that you've got your foreign parent, you've got your Canadian uh, resident um, corporation, and you've got a foreign affiliate, a foreign affiliate below it. So the investment in that foreign affiliate can be um, in the way of loan or shares. And um, really, the, the only uh, key is that the foreign parent is actually controlling that Canadian company. So what they said was, or the real the nuts and bolts of the, the provision was, is that where you've got this Canadian or this foreign company that invests money into Canada, Canada in turn invests that money into a foreign affiliate, the amount of the investment that is going down to the foreign affiliate corp is deemed to be a dividend paid by the Canadian company to its foreign parent. So uh, the, the dotted lines are, are not quite right. They should be coming from the Canadian, um, Canadian company, but effectively that means there's a deemed dividend whenever Canada is, is investing into its foreign affiliate. Now there are some exceptions we'll go through in a minute, so this is really the, the very simplified um, structure. Um, but what happens then is, is when there's this deemed dividend going from the Canadian company to its foreign parent, you've got withholding taxes that apply to it. So uh, really can easily happen with unintended consequences where you're investing from Canada into this foreign affiliate and not realizing that as soon as you did that, you triggered a, a, a tax liability uh, as if you paid a dividend to, to your foreign parent. So what it was intended to catch, or this is what it was targeted as, but as you know with a lot of the tax laws, there, there's so many unintended consequences and it really catches a lot broader uh, situations than they were originally intended for. So what they were trying to prevent was the foreign parent corp lends funds to the Canadian company, which in turn invests in the foreign affiliate. So we've covered that. Now the Canadian company pays interest to its foreign parent and deducts it for a Canadian tax. So the money come from, coming from the parent, foreign parent to Canada is in the form of debt. It's in a loan and it's interest bearing. So what they're doing is they're paying interest up and deducting that interest in Canada. Now that interest would, depending on what country that foreign parent is in, it would be subject to some withholding taxes, but in some, with some treaties, they can be quite low. Um, yet you get a full tax deduction in the Canadian corp on the payment of that interest. 
Now, as the, the investment in the foreign affiliate turns out, if it's an active business, and as Brad alluded to earlier on, you can pay what's called an exempt surplus dividend from that uh, foreign affiliate up to Canada. And if it's in a treaty country where, where Canada has a treaty uh, with the country that foreign affiliate is in, and that income was derived from an active business, you can effectively pay that up tax-free to Canada. So Canada can earn their income tax-free, the Canadian company, and have a deduction from what they're paying up to the foreign parent. So as you can imagine, over time, as time goes on, there really isn't any tax being paid in Canada, yet you're still passing money up to the foreign parent. So that's where they were, where uh, finance was having an issue with the, these structures, and they, they basically introduced these rules to try and prevent this from, from continuing on. So what are the implications? Well, as we, we saw, it's, um, it's a downstream investment from, from Canada, the foreign affiliate. It's considered a deemed dividend to the foreign parent. This dividend is subject to the, the normal withholding taxes on dividends, depending on what country that foreign parent is in. And so there is this um, liability immediately before anyone's even generated any income. It's basically just as you've invested down the, the tiers of the companies through the corporate chain and down into the foreign affiliate, you've already triggered a liability. Um, so there are some, I mean, investments is, is defined quite broadly, which includes you know, acquiring shares of the foreign affiliate, capital contributions, say you're transferring an asset of some value down, um, indebtedness that's not in the ordinary course of business and it's not repaid within 180 days, um, foreign affiliate shares acquired indirectly, so if you had a Canadian hold co that you were trying to you know, pass the money through instead of directly out of the Canadian core, um, these would all be considered part of the definition of an investment uh, into that foreign affiliate. So what I'm sure everyone wants to know is what are the exceptions to this and how do we avoid it? Um, so one of the uh, ones that is, uh, can be uh, a bit complicated, as is this entire section of it, there is an election that you can do that would deem that amount that's, that's a deemed dividend to actually be just a return of capital to the foreign parent. So uh, when that, that money is being repatriated back to the foreign corporation, the foreign parent, if you say that we're just going to reduce our cost basis in the shares that the foreign um, corporation holds of the, of, of the Canadian company and the Canadian company of the foreign affiliate, uh, it just reduces it and it defers any kind of income or gain until you actually sell the, the foreign affiliate instead of it happening immediately. So it just erodes in the initial capital investment and as you get to the end, you would have zero cost base in it. So when you did sell, it would be a capital gain on the entire amount. So that's one uh, way to get around it. The, there's other, a few others that are um, exceptions to the rule. So if the Canadian corporation and the foreign affiliate are closely connected, their business activities are closely connected. Uh, for example, you've got a manufacturing operation where um, the foreign affiliate is providing parts to whatever it is that the Canadian company is producing and the two are rather integrated in their business models and, and how they operate, that can be considered an, an exception to the rule. Uh, a second one would be a certain internal reorganization. So if you're basically just restructuring the corporate group, but there's no actual new investment into, into what's happening, um, that too would be considered an exception to it. It'd basically be all new investments since March of 2012. And then the last one is what's called pertinent loans or uh, indebtedness, which uh, is up, it's very up for interpretation, uh, but it, it effectively means that if you already have loans in place that are charging interest down to that, to that foreign affiliate and it's part of your business operations, then there can be an exception there too, but they're very limited and uh, it's, as with everything, the devil's in the details, so um, would require a detailed analysis to be sure that, that that does fall within the exceptions. 